Hey everybody and welcome back to the Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. My name is Adam, that's Jake, and this is our third time introing this podcast. On tonight's episode, we have some listener data, a home gym con update, product feature ideas, steadfast lifting, some news about that company, uh, new products, more data, a Q&A, and then the Iron Master Super Pro Bench Review by Jake. Jake, take it away. Thank you, Adam. So number one, and this is pretty much just a reminder that wherever you are listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, it is available elsewhere. So we asked the Instagram followers, um, where do you listen to the podcast? Either YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or other YouTube was the slight winner with 36% of the votes, Spotify, 34%. Apple Podcasts, 19.5%, and then other was 10.2%. So really, this is just a way for us to start off the podcast and say, you can listen wherever you listen to podcasts, not just if you're watching on YouTube. We have lots and lots of episodes, especially like the longer interviews with a lot of different business owners um, on podcasts that you might want to just check out. So um, yeah, that's the first thing. Next up home gym con update so we actually have our logo ready to go the story is um it took us quite a while to to get to this you know it's been like almost six months since the last home gym con and just like deciding on a logo is a big decision and there's just so many different ways you can go about it so honestly i just pushed it for a while because i didn't really know what i wanted but we went with a few different elements. Number one, the red color. So we went with red because of Louisville red, kind of like the Louisville University um, Cardinals. Um, nice, bright red home gym con. We have a home gym in the photo as opposed to just more of a simple barbell and plates. And then we also kind of have pay homage to like the move to a big city with uh, the Louisville background um there's a there's a big bridge that leads into downtown so that's one of the the main features of this logo adam anything to add no i love the logo um yeah i love I, usually i like more simple logos um this has a lot going on and uh, I, I don't know i really like it yeah throughout the process we were both like oh, too much going on too much going on and then you know we just kind of settled on it i think uh, the last few years have been more simple, but I think since we're, ch ch if this was like the logo forever, I think it might be a problem. But since it's just like a year at a time, you kind of have the freedom to do what it you want. It makes it fun. So, yeah. It makes it fun. Yeah. <clears throat> so logo reveal, nothing but, nothing but positive comments on the Instagram post we posted a few hours ago as well. Oh, and if there's a negative comment, it's not going to change it. So. Right. Well, if there were if they were all negative, I probably would have just been like, uh, let's pull change it, it. Pull it down. No, I, I, no. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's going to be many people who like absolutely hate it. They might have like their differences on what they think the logo should be, but I think this looks great. Awesome. All right, next up, some more product features that I would like to see. So last week I had like seven or eight ideas. I think the best one was the power rack with the fifth post with the fifth one being through the middle of the back. I think there is potential with that. Um, but as, as I was working out this week, I thought of a handful of other ones. So, so number one with quite a bit more Smith machines making their way into the home gyms, I think there's some potential for attachments. So, Number one, uh, SSB. So something like an SSB where somebody can easily grab the bar in front of the, or grab it without put, putting their hands by their shoulder, something like that. Um, you also might, it might be beneficial to like have some sort of slant board or something like that. So some sort of combination like that to create either SSB type, type squat or like hack squat. I think there's potential for that. Um, a multi-grip, I think a multi-grip would be an easy addition. Um, bridge built brought something like that to home gym con for a, just a add on to a barbell last year. I think you could do the same thing with the Smith machine 
add some variety to it. And then, you know, like some of those squeeze grips where you can go in and out like a fly on the barbell, like the butterfly bar from last year. Um, something like that. I think there, that might be, there might be potential for that. Uh, something else that I've mentioned on the pot or I've mentioned like a few times is, uh, and a, and a product is I wish some rowers had more resistance. So I think there's potential to make more, uh, something with more resistance for a rower, a ski erg and an air bike. Um, and when I, th the way I think about that is like, so concept two created something, created a rower for rowers. It is like rower. It is like rowing. It's very similar. Um, one of the feedback, one of the like feedback, the feedback, um, or comments I've received when I say like there's, I wish there was something with more resistance is that's not what actually actual rowing is like. And, and I don't, I don't, I don't think it needs to be like rowing. I think it can just be a different kind of workout, you know, something with a little more, um, intensity, um, or just resistance. And the way I think about it is like, you know, with like a spin bike, you can like turn it all the way up and you're just like barely moving it and your legs are just like burning. I feel like there's potential to do that with all of the other ones. So that's, that's just an idea. Next spotter arms made to be used in and out of the power rack. So, so by that, I mean, like if you have a 30 inch power rack or like 30 inch depth, it would be great if you could just use, um, 29 inch spotter arms. You could use spotter arms. And so there's be just enough to where there was like, it, what doesn't really matter. Um, so you could easily move them in and out because I think a lot of people, if you have a power rack, you're using both sides to lift. And then same thing for like a 24 inch rack. If it's 24 inch rack, you have 23 inch spotter arms. And then if you have a 41 inch that this might be a little bit too long, but like something like 40 inches. I mean, it'd be, I think it'd be worth testing, but that way you, you could easily move it in and out of the rack. Um, traditional like, um, safeties, safeties are more difficult to, to like get in, get in and out than spotter arms as well. So I just don't see a need for full safeties for most home gym owners. Uh, especially with the strength of most of the spotter arms out there. I think they're pl plenty strong enough. And then lastly, I have on this list, um, and this is something I've also mentioned for a while, just an all in one, but not to be used as a rack at all. So all of the all in ones right now ha are, are meant to also be used with a barbell. So I think if, if you created an all in one, that was designed to be as a secondary option for your primary rack. You could do things like widen the uprights, um, which would be better for like functional trainer. Um, just, and it will also just give you more space in between if you wanted to put attachments on there. Uh, you'd want to make sure that you put a lap pull down in the back. Uh, also low row, uh, three by three posts for, for attachments, obviously. And then I think jammer arms with the trolley as well would be, would be cool. So those are just some products that I wish were on the market today that don't seem to be. Yeah. Um, do you use your spotter your arms inside your rack? Do you have, do you have still spotters? No, I don't. I you just don't. have uh, safeties. Oh, okay. In, yeah. In I, between. yes. Yeah. When I bought my, um, PR 5,000. I just opted for the pin and pipe, knowing that I'm going to use the spotter arms in and outside. So I do that. Um, it would be nice if they're a little bit longer. I think I have a 30 inch depth rack might be 42. I'm trying to eyeball it, but, and, and there is about like six to eight inches where the spotter arms don't completely cover. Um, but yeah, I only use spotter arms. So longer ones that you could like quickly flip on the inside and outside would be nice. I like that. 
and then an all-in-one rack. I think what you would call it would be like a um, like an all-in-one functional trainer is like what I would call it, right? It's a functional trainer. It's wider and it has everything like you said, like three by three posts and everything. That would be pretty sweet. Like, um, yeah, a, a monster transformer <laughs> functional trainer yeah, I, that can do it all in the corner, you know? And it would serve the purpose of like all your other machines. Like when I'm looking around my gym, like I could, all the other stuff could be something like that in one footprint. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people would go for that. Talk about fifth post in the back. What if it was just a functional trainer, your, your two, three by three posts that with the trolleys on there and everything. And then in the back, you know, triangled out was that like third post or however you put it where you could go behind and have like dip attachments and all that other stuff or hook up your, um, your isolator, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. That we're would losing work too. the, uh, might be losing the lap pull low row at that point. But since we're in fantasy land, the lap pull low <laughs> row will just like work off one of the arms on the sides, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're, you could just optimize one of the sides. Yeah. Yep. Especially if you, if you are like creating those, like if you can get like those things that get our XR using or the, are on the C10, Oh yeah. Uh, the like Extends adjustable. Over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, I think for that one, the, the key is the wider uprights, just more, more, more space for the functional trainer. And then also, um, more, more room in the middle. So you could play with your attachments and such, and maybe just leave up at all times, no room for a barbell. And I think that's okay. Yep. All right, let's move on. All right, company spotlight, steadfast lifting. So I asked Adam before the podcast if he knew anything about steadfast lifting, and he didn't really. So I'm I'm about to educate him on steadfast list, lifting and tell him about what's been going on. So um, and if if I get any of these details wrong, just correct me. And also feel free to let us know in the comments what you think about this and anything. That's something we don't usually do pretty well, but, um, steadfast lifting. So, um, there, the owner, his name is Chris. Uh, he started steadfast and I think, I think it was more of like a pandemic company that a company that came out of the pandemic and he started making attachments and a few other items in the USA. So he made like, uh, the flat tricep bar he made like um mag pens uh lat pull down bar i think he had a bench for a while and i think the like he sent me a few items and you know they were pretty good and i most of his prices for being made in america were pretty good uh so he operated for a few years and i i think i heard some like customer service issues but overall not too much i think you know, the last few years, a lot of people had excuses for some of the issues. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I think it was probably like a year ago, he decided to, maybe it was longer than a year ago, but he decided to, and actually it couldn't have been a whole year because he signed up for Home Gym Con and then he signed up in the middle of Home Gym Con during all of this. But anyways, he decided to create a product that was very similar to the stealth spotter arms and sell it at quite a bit of a a lower price than surplus strength. So I think he got a ton of orders because, you know, stealth spotter arms, awesome, awesome product, but it's also pretty pricey and not something everybody wants to pay full price for. So I think they thought the, this option would be good. Um, so he took a bunch of pre-orders like a bunch, um, and went dark. Nobody knew what happened. And, um, it's had to have been about a year and he's back. Um, so the people that, that wanted to get their money back, I think they had to go the, the credit card charge back route where you have to just make a dispute with your credit card company. Uh, I, I don't know like if he's communicated with people who still haven't received their refunds or with the people that purchase the product and 
just never heard back. I don't know where he's at, but he made, he, 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 he has an Instagram account now. It's back up. I don't think it's the same one. I think it's completely fresh. And he's been on the home gym discord just saying, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm making products. I'm doing this. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm all for second chances, but has there been any response from him about people who bought a product they never received? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. If you look at the Instagram, it just looks like we're back. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there was quite a bit of drama. I think there was like a lot of concern as well. Like, hopefully he's okay. Um, right. You know, he might have went through some like mental struggles um, or just like got overwhelmed not quite sure what happened but i think there were there were concerns that more than that happened like within the discord like did something go wrong with his health um i saw messages like that um uh, but you know <laughs> he's he's back um so i do think he should probably say something somewhere somehow about what happened if he wants to earn people's um trust back and we'll see what he has to say you know you want to like give him a chance to like make clear what happened and also right any wrongs but you know definitely interesting story so i'm on the instagram and a lot of the posts don't have a lot of comments yeah because Here, it is like six it, days old yeah yeah. And here's one. You mind if I read it? Yeah, go for it. This is why you shut down your last page on a comment. The reply from him. Two reasons. I had to shut down the business temporarily. Uh, I didn't mean to delete the last page. I deleted my personal account. The last page was tied to it. So it all went. So I'm starting the page all over again. That's it. Um, yeah. Not knowing the full story. You know, I, I don't know. Um, just hearing your story, I, I just want to say, like, uh, it, it seems odd that we don't know. So the pre-orders were made and paid for, and no product right. delivered. And, the, and then, okay, all right, well, that sounds, we know how that sounds. So hopefully yeah. there's more to it than that. Okay. Yes. So if you yeah. have information, so. hey, comment below, educate us. So whether it's in case we're, we'd love to, somebody who made a pre-order or... Yeah, yeah, we'd love to get you, Chris, on the podcast. Explain your story as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and we'd have to ask tough questions, though. So, yeah, we'll see. Interesting. Hopefully, we 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 learn. Um, and then hopefully, everybody got their money back as well. Correct. But all right, let's let's move on. So, but anyways, if you have thoughts, have a additional info, let us know. dude all right new products section uh so that was the strengther from concept two which will be available next year um you know we don't have, i think uh, most people listening to this have probably seen this product it looks like a they claim it as a, a strength product i think this is primarily for like rehab and older folks i remember like three or four years ago i went into like an older an older person's basement and you know they had they had a nice house they had and then I, you went to their basement and they had like a few dumbbells concept two rower and a sauna and my first thought was oh this would be a good good place for that basement so I think, I mean, I think, I, I think, I think it's a cool product for like general fitness, especially for like people who aren't like using a barbell often. And I also think it says a lot about who concept two actually is. Like, I don't think, like, I think they were just like roped into CrossFit. You know, I don't think they, they, and I actually, I, I heard, um, a podcast with the concept two founders and it really was born from rowing 
and it was really like a rowing thing and you know the crossfit just happened to use their equipment and that's what expanded their company massively and that's why a lot of people are uh, have associated with them with so i i just think it's you know it's uh it's not a crossfit product and i think and i think uh concept two will probably like not create products for crossfit in the future be stuff like this yeah um we're, we're, we're talking to the majority of people who have barbell rack plates right um this this doesn't look like it fits um a lot of the gyms that we speak to but it doesn't i mean obviously a company like this they wouldn't release something that they thought would just absolutely flop so there's got to be a market for it um not sure if the majority of listeners are that market yeah they're not really our listeners but i and i do think when i saw it originally i also thought ooh, that would be a killer flywheel setup so if somebody can do make something like this but a flywheel version of it i think it would crush i think it's really it would be a really like the angles and just like the easeability of using it as a flywheel would be awesome so with the eccentric movements uh anyways um ab mat barbell pad so this is live on rogues website so this is a pad that you can put on a bar it looks like you can squat with it use for zerchers uh, used for hip hip thrust pad. Uh, I didn't see it on Abmat's website, but it is available at Rogue. Seems like a decent option. Uh, Gronk Fitness released a standing lateral raise. Ooh, I like that. Like one of the yeah, it seems like one of the hot items oh. um, recently. A lot of standing lateral raises. And then also from Rep's new product section, they're coming out with some protein bars, some protein powder, and then the dumbbell storage cow, dumbbell storage cart should be released uh, relatively soon. Was, was it already? Um, I just saw they posted about it. Yeah, maybe not. I don't think it's out yet. Okay, it looks I do sweet. Think it's I, for the Reppins, right? Is that am I? Yeah, it does yeah. look cool. And it, then it awesome. does have a couple different color options as well. There's like I think there was like a white that you can throw in there somewhere. Yeah, dude, that lateral raise is oh, I'm sorry. I I jumped on their website real quick. Small <laughs> footprint. Okay. Cool movement. I, I was like, yeah. Thousand bucks. That's the killer for lateral raises. So Yeah. Yeah. When you're uh, when you're adding I've, something that just does lateral raises, it's like eh. But it's cool. I I have a pretty funny story when it comes to the, a lateral raise. So, you know how Kyle Kaizen DIY used to do some like guest blog posts and do like DIY projects. Um, so one of the one of the DIY um, blog posts he did was the was the rack mounted lateral raise. The wood one, and right? It was a real yeah. It's a really yeah. good design. I remember one time I was on like the live Google analytics page and there it, it was, it was strange. Cause there was like seven people on that website at the same exact time. So I like clicked onto, I was like, it's random. It was like a Friday morning. Why are seven people? And like, that's making up all the traffic on the website right, right now. Um, and it was one person in, like a random city in the U S which I, I Googled and was like, Oh, there, that's a company that's there. And then <laughs> six in Japan or no, not Japan in China. And then uh, I looked at the ref I looked at the refer, the referring, like where did the traffic come from? And it came from Microsoft teams. <laughs> So it was clearly so they're, like they're, a the work companies call. there be like, hey, how can we uh, put this into production? Yeah, yeah. They, or they were looking at it as like an example of something that, that from they could Teams, do. China, and said company in the U.S. Do you uh -huh. know what company was based there? Yes, but I'm not going to say it. You're not going to say it. <laughs> Come on. I don't want to say it out loud. No, I'm Why? not going to say it out loud. What? I'll say it to you offline. All right. 
I don't want to throw them under the bus. <laughs> they found a good idea. They wanted to use it. And they do have lateral rays. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but probably don't say it then. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a bit? It's kind. Yeah. I mean, it's a random city and a very ra- a city I'd never heard of. And then I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, that's a ran- a relatively random company." But, gotcha. All right. All right. Let's move on to some data. We'll run through this. So uh, we asked uh, about a few about a few products whether you'd ha- like, rather have them to be fixed or adjustable within your home gym. Um, you could also choose. I don't know. Um, and in the chart right here, um, I removed the, I don't know votes. Um, but we asked about dumbbells, kettlebells, mace, and triad and bench. So the, uh, dumbbells received about 50, 50 kettlebells were about 80, um, percent wanting fixed 20% wanting adjustable 54% or for mace. 54% 54% versus 46% adjustable and then triads 46% fixed versus 54% adjustable and then bench was over 90 10 in favor of adjustable um ooh. that's not spelled right that's all right um and then you can just kind of see on this slide how many people voted i don't know so very large I don't know votes for triads and then also over half or almost half for, um, and then we also asked, um, of like basically four of the essential items or four items that people would add to their home gyms. What do you use most second, most third, most, and then last most. And the options were barbell and weights, dumbbells, kettlebells, and then pulley systems. So I think to no one's surprise, Barbell and weights was number one. 66% said that they used them the most. Uh, the second most popular here um, was dumbbells with 50% voting second most. And then third most popular, 41% voting pulley systems as uh, their third most popular item that they use out of this list. And then lastly was kettlebells, 63% voted um, last for kettlebells. Uh, okay. Some Q and a, I, we got quite a bit of, um, responses or questions on the, uh, um, Instagram, but I cut it down to just three. Um, so number one, Mount Rushmore of podcast guests. So this was kind of hard. Um, and what did I choose? Let me see. So, (laughs) Rich Galgano made it. He definitely made it. That was probably the most interesting interview I've done. I'll go with the round table of like Carp and Keith and Man Who Parks and Jim and Ship and who am I missing? Eccles. They always bring the heat. And then uh the the mutant metals. I think the react the the one after the rogue incident. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very good. And his first one is also very good. And then, uh, a couple, a cup, uh, one that I've interviewed twice with a couple of good podcasts. And this one is a sleeper is the bam pammer ones. So he has some, oh, yeah. a couple of very, very interesting stories. Um, that, that is like how he got to where he is. And then like current business updates. So so I'd say that those are my, not necessarily like the most listened or viewed, uh, but those are, that's my Mount Rushmore because of how interesting those ones were. All right. Who, do you have a Mount Rushmore of them? It's probably hard to do off the top of your head. I'd probably go, uh, Brian Hennessy's probably my, one of my favorites. I remember just listening to that one and being like, this guy's awesome. Um, Rich Galgano recently, that one was great. <laughs> That's number two for sure. Um, I do like when the boys get together. I like the post home gym con uh, discussions that we have. Those are yeah awesome. It's everyone who's been there and kind of in it. So that's three, four. I, I yeah, mutant metals was good. Mutant, yeah, and just like, just a good dude. You, you like listening? Just like 
good people. So, yeah, we'll call that my top four. Cool. Who is your favorite content creator and why is it Kurt? (laughs) From Kurt. Do you have a favorite content creator right now? I really like the stuff that uh, we've talked about this. That um, you're gonna steal my answer. Flex Mark Spot puts out. Yeah, I love his stuff. Yeah. So if you if you don't follow him, I mostly uh, you know, I don't know if he does. Does he do a YouTube channel? If he does, I don't follow him. It's just his Instagram, and he goes so in depth on like on all the new stuff. He he brings everything into his basement. Yeah, and again, really good guy. Um, home gym content. We we sat together for a little bit, had a beer, and. Uh, yeah, just a just a nice guy and um, super in depth and everything he has to say about a product is stuff I want to know. You know, he's not like reading spec pages; like he's telling you the stuff that you would like actually care about. So, flex marks spot, my favorite. Yeah, I, that 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 was my answer too. But I'll I'll throw in a a, a quick one for no fate terrible mm-hmm. Amazon product reviews. Those are awesome. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, the he keeps getting sent these terrible items, and he's very honest on the reviews, and they're hilarious. So, and I think everyone's doing good. I think like Joe Gray's doing these really thorough, intense reviews, you know, and you know, there's too many to to list right now. Um, all right, what innovation slash innovations are needed to have home gyms? take a step up as in just become more common. So that comes from at Garrett <clears throat> CS CS 77 on Instagram. Do you have a thought on that? Innovations. See when I want what I want in my home gym or the stuff that I like the best out of commercial gyms. So innovations, I don't know. Um, I need stuff that fits in my basement. So stuff that has height requirement and smaller footprints, but I still want the same style of machines. I still want, you know, pulley systems and racks and barbells and plates and all that stuff. So I guess just smaller foot size, um, footprints. Yeah. I, th- I think my answer for this would be, I think there's a couple of things that are just too expensive right now that could help take home gyms to the next level. So number one, flywheels. I think if more people implement flywheels, those are, those are an item and this kind of goes off what you just said, but that's an item that doesn't take up much space and can add quite a dynamic. And then I also think once like the stuff like the Voltras take off or like the anchors get better, like things like that, I think those are going to, those are going to like replace a lot of heavy stuff within home gyms and add, just add more space and, versatility because it's easier to move that stuff. So I think, I think those are the things that I'm kind of keeping an eye on. If, if costs can go down for those items, I think it would add quite a bit to the home gyms. Oh, um, along with what I said, like, um, footprint and like the same movements that you would find in pieces of equipment that you'd find in the commercial gym, you know, there, I guess there is innovation in that when we saw ATX bring something like the, um, the Viking press, um, hack squat, not hack squat. I'm sorry. Um, kind of like a pendulum squat type situation yeah. and calf raise, yeah. like the all in one thing that, that does all the things like properly. Okay. I like that. Um, Joey Echeverria had a, um, uh, a fifth post. He, he just wrote that in the last comment, uh, to hold a bu- bully glider, uh, for use of belt squat. And he said it makes a lot of sense, especially if you plan to use the back posts for weight storage. So he just kind of, I just thought that was interesting, threw that in there. And then lastly, um, a question that I get a decent amount and just kind of want to remind people, uh, cool survey, any chance you can include the sample size? So most of the surveys get about 1,000 responses each time. So... Just keep that in mind. And it's a pretty biased group. So it's home gym owners, 80% guys. Uh, most are in between 28 and 45. 80 seems kind of low. So you're not talking like 97% men? I mean, it, it might be like 90% guys. Yeah. Um, 
the like garage gym experiment followers are like 80, 80, 20, but I can imagine, I can see how it, it could be like 90, 10 answering the surveys. All right. And then lastly, Iron Master Super Pro Bench Review. So this is an item that I've had in my home gym about a year and a half. And it's one of those items that I kept seeing really positive reviews and I didn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily like want to add it into my home gym. I didn't really see why it was such a big deal. However, actually using it in my home gym and around and lifting on it, I have decided that this is the best adjustable bench for me within my home gym. And I am going to discuss that in this review. So number one, it is very durable and it's very stable. So I mentioned my initial skepticism. It's most like it's, it, it is because it's, it's an average size bench and there's, there's other average size. Uh, there's other above average size benches that I had used and really liked and just thought there's no reason for me to move down a level to something smaller. I'm also, um, over 200 pounds. So I thought maybe it might be a little bit flimsy for me. However, it's not, it's, it's rock solid. Um, I, I have never, I don't think I've ever even noticed a wobble. Uh, it does include a 1000 pound uh, weight capacity in the flat position. It's made of entirely 11 gauge and 12 gauge steel. Um, again, just heavy duty construction and there's little movement at all. Um, in the incline position, the bench supports up to 600 pounds and then even using it as like a, a GHD type, if you add the crunch attachment, um, me at over 200 pounds, it's rock solid. I don't feel unstable at all. Um, and with that, what, what it's, it's very stable. And what makes this my choice, uh, is its combination with how easy it is to move around and just overall convenience. So, um, I have a pretty loaded home gym. I also don't really like to leave anything out if I'm not in use. I've got kids running around, um, going in and out. I just, I just like to like clean up the floor, um, and not have anything just laying, laying around. So having something like that's easy to move around store has, is like essential for me. Uh, so a few things about this bench, um, in regards to that is it weighs only 65 pounds. You know, I think some of the other rep and rogue benches are closer to a hundred pounds and they're just more difficult uh, to, to move around, especially turning in tight spaces. This one's really easy to do, uh, it has integrated wheels and transport handles as you would expect. And then, um, it can be stored vertically. So if you can see in the picture, I have a little space in between my stairs and like a sink in the garage that I, I that I usually uh, put it in. And then lastly, I'll, I'll mention, um, if you're like a husband and a wife, this is a good option for, for both of them to use. So it's, it, if you're like a, a hundred and if you're a female and you don't necessarily want to wield around a huge bench, uh, this one's, this is a good option for you as well. All right. The, uh, removable seat was something that I've come to appreciate as well. So, um, as opposed to most of the other adjustable benches on the market, uh, this one includes a removable seat that you can take off completely for flat bench. And then also there's three different height settings, uh, that you can, um, use for different lifts. So I find that it's good for, um, just finding the right angle on certain, um, like adjustable dumbbell or adjustable, um, bench movements or, um, remove, you can, you can change it to closer to the middle of the bench for things like shoulder press or tricep extension so that, um, it's not hitting the, like your head and it's easier to use for movements like that. And then there's also no, with that, there's no gap for flat bench. So 
not that I ever found like the the gap on the AB5200, for example, uh, too big of a hindrance, but it is pretty nice. No, like it is pretty nice using it with uh, no gap at all. All right. Another key feature of this bench is its ability to add attachments. And Iron Master has a ton. Um, I have only used the crunch sit-up attachment. So everything else um, I don't have experience with. But the crunch sit-up attachment I use as like a GHD for GHD sit type sit-ups. Um, I mentioned earlier it's it's uh, the bench stays incredibly stable when I'm using it and it's pretty easy to take on and off. Um, no big issues there. And then I also really like using it for decline, um, adjustable bench. So, uh, I don't like using a, uh, decline bench without having some sort of leg holder. Um, especially if you're going a little bit heavier. Uh, but I really like doing decline benches, uh, specifically on, the Smith machine. It's, it's a nice, um, variance there. And then in terms of like other attachments, I think it's, it's just nice to know, like if you buy the iron master bench, it's nice to know that eventually you'll be able to add, if you need to a leg attachment, dip attachment, chin up attachment, preacher curl attachment, and then it can also connect to a cable tower. So I personally would rather those for those things i'd rather just have it um at a more i'd personally just rather have those things set up on like a rack or actually have a pulley system but again nice to know and then when it comes to the cost so it's not it's not the cheapest it's not necessarily the most expensive but it is more expensive than i think most people want to pay for a home gym bench um, with that being said, uh, I do think that it's worth it with its, with just its overall high quality, its overall versatility, uh, the durability is there. Like I've said, I've had it for a year and a half. It still looks new. Um, I think it's going to last, you know, for many years I've, I've, I've heard iron master products, uh, last forever. So that's, that, that also plays into the cost. Uh, so in general, I think it's a very good long-term investment for those who just want to do the buy once cry once um again i think like knowing the amount of attachments that you can potentially add uh over time that's also a nice nice longevity piece as well i think um if you are a ber a beginner and you're just kind of testing the home gym waters this might be more than you need you might you might not want to spend $500 on a bench, uh, which is totally understandable and something a little bit more budget friendly is, is acceptable, but just know if you decide to, uh, eventually upgrade and you want your bench forever, your lifetime bench, you, I, you should, you could say, uh, this, this is, this would be a good option. So just in general, if, 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 uh, you have the buy once cry once, uh, attitude, this one, I don't think it'll disappoint you. All right, la. All right, some drawbacks. So, I think a lot of people really love the ladder style adjustment, which is just a little bit easier to adjust. So that's just kind of a minor inconvenience. Uh, the the way it is, the pop pen is does really lock it in place, though. So, uh, it you could say that it's not quite as convenient, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, again, drawback, it might just be a little bit more expensive than you want to pay. Uh, I think in terms of aesthetics, I think there's better looking benches. It would be nice if there were, you know, some color options, but, but yeah, it's all right. And then, um, I also, I also really like having a wide pad option. So, um, you are limited to the stock pads, which is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like 10 inches on one and then 12 on the other side. So you're stuck with that. No, no, like wide pad add-ons, which might be something that they might want to consider in the future. All right. So 
if someone were to ask me, I want to buy a, a home gym bench that will last forever, but I don't want to pay rogue prices, for example, or I want to stick within the five or six hundred dollar range, I would most likely say Iron Master or one of the rep options. Uh, there's just pros and cons to different, the, the different styles from rep. And then also the, uh, Iron Master versus, versus rogue. So, um, I personally would probably, I would go with either the Iron Master super pro bench or the AB 5200. Um, so let's just do a one-on-one -on -one example for that. So, uh, I mentioned the versatility and the easy to move around of the Iron Master. So the AB5200 is going to be a little bit more bulky. So if you want something with like a more wide pad or, um, you know, just a heavier frame, uh, the AB5200 would be a great choice as well. Uh, I also think the AB5200 looks better. So if you want to add something to match your rack, for example, uh, rep would be an option with any of their benches because they have more options. Uh, I think the Iron Master is more suitable for like couples um, or like um, just a wider v variety of size. So I think like someone someone smaller and then also somebody larger, even larger than me, uh, would would do just fine with it as their basic home gym bench. Uh, I also think the uh, the AB4100 is a good option for uh, a wide variety as well from rep. Uh, it's it's cheaper than the Iron Master Bench, but isn't quite as versatile. Um, but that one's pretty easy to move around as well. Maybe not as easy to move around as Iron Master, but still um, a good option there as well. Um, and then I did have the Iron Master and the AB5200 at the same time I ran out of room and needed to get rid of some stuff. And ultimately the AB5200 went away. And um, it, was, it was because of like the ease, ease ability to like store and move around that it ultimately went with the Iron Master. Uh, sometimes I do miss that AB5200 with a wide pad. I've also had the GetRx FID uh, AB2. You know, you could throw that in here as well for sure. So, I mean, it's a, it, it's a very tough decision between these two. Uh, and I can definitely see two different ideal customers um, for, for both of the options. So, but yeah, I, I do miss that wide pad on the adjustable bench sometimes. And then, uh, just a few more, just a few more items, uh, to check off. So assembly is pretty easy. Um, powder coat finish has lasted, um, pretty well should cover, uh, or should, should make sure that the bench looks good for a while. Uh, the ven the vinyl is durable and provides a pretty good grip. I do prefer the, the rep grippier vinyl though. Um, it's a little bit more grippier, um, and more like sweat resistant. And then the, uh, the, the, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but there's two pad widths, um, when flat. So 12 inches on one end and 10 inches on the other, only the 10 inch side can be used for incline and decline. So I can, I do see that as one of the drawbacks as well. I personally, as a bigger guy, I wish it was just fully 12 inches across. So in conclusion, is it the best bench for most? I think for people who are willing to have the buy once, cry once mentality, yes. Um, especially if there's multiple people using the home gym. Uh, I think it's just very, it has a really solid versatility combination with durability and just like overall, uh, a strong bench. So yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, I think Iron Man, Iron Master, uh, knocked it out of the park with this one. I know they are continuing to update it as well, or just like they know benches is one of their strengths and 
Um, they're focused on keeping these benches at the top of the list. Anything to add, Adam? Well, a few things. I, I have to say that like um, my initial uh, uh, take on the bench is the same as yours. Um, I looked at it and said, eh, probably not something I would use. And then, you know, you've had it in your place and I've used it a handful of times. It's like, this is actually a really nice bench. And you're right. It is easy just to wheel around. I actually like the adjustment with the foot pedal and, and the lifting up and down. I think that's great. Um, one thing at home gym con, I, I was able to use, I did dip on it and I did do some pull-ups on it. Shockingly sturdy. You look at it and it looks tall, oh, yeah. skinny, like it's going to tip over. And, uh, it, you know, like you and I, we're not, we're not little guys. And, uh, you know, I was up there doing some dips and stuff and it, it wouldn't budge. So those attachments were impressive because I did not expect that from the way it looked. So no, that was a good take. I'd, I'd say this is, this would be an ideal bench for you in your basement. Oh, you think I do? What do you, what do you currently have? Oh, um, the AB 3000. That's what I Rep. thought. Yeah, I think you would like this more than that. I mean, it's just like, yeah. I mean, the ability to store vertically, and then um, I'd get rid of the Titan ninety degree if I had this with the, uh, um, the way it goes ninety and the the seat goes higher, so you can get the pad lower on your back, so you can actually like lean back a little into the bench and press. That's my issue with yes, doing a regular yeah. adjustable. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, do I think you would like this more than the AB three thousand? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we, I mean it's it's also like quite a bit more expensive, but yeah, uh, well, yeah. yeah be, We're talking like three fifty to like five hundred. Do you just um, like always have your bench in the rack when you're not in use? Yeah, yeah, it sits in the rack. Yeah, yeah, yep. Or there's like a space in between the lat tower and the rack. It's like I squatted yesterday. Um, it just sat there. But yeah, vertical yeah. storage is something I want out of my bed, next bench whenever whenever that may be. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Did you like tonight's episode? Well, be sure to keep your eye out for new episode releases wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to follow Neural News. Are you not subscribed yet? Well, check out the link below and sign up for more Home Gym content. Let us know how you feel about that new logo, Home Gym Con 3. Home Gym Con 2025 is coming in late June in Louisville, Louisville, or Louisville. However you decide to say it, we want to see you there. Go to homegymcon.com, get your tickets. Check out those competitions. They're slowly getting released for you to sign up for. Um, Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Jake? Anything else left for these listeners? Guys, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening and goodbye.